Thanks to the supporters of channel member Doyce 7 I'm pretty chuffed as well, Mrs. William. If Paris Saint-Germain at home, the first game in the new home of football with its new expansion, it's the perfect testimonial match for Sir Harrison Davies. And once that's done, he can he can leave with our blessing, finish his playing career, and obviously we're going to bring him back as a coach at some point as well. It's It sounds like a fantastic plan. A fitting send-off. And he'll earn a few quid as well. Hello and welcome to part 111 of Homegrown. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our final two games of the regular Premier League season. Uh, we're away against both Watford and Newcastle. Since you were last with me, um, we've kind of experimented a lot with fringe players, as you can see by some of the goal scorers. So Harrison Davies weighing in with a goal. Cameron Little scored there. And we even beat West Ham with the rotated players involved. And actually, we've we've not been doing too badly. We're still sat in ninth place, which is where we finished last year. Slam Dunks, I assume Slam Dunk is still there. He is. Slam Dunks, Birmingham, uh, the only team who can realistically catch us and push us down below last year's ninth place finish. And we're still in with a chance of finishing as high as eighth, although Everton have got a two go two go a two point advantage and a one game advantage. So it's probably unlikely and with two away games I wouldn't be at all surprised to see us finish 10th but you know what we've spent the last six or seven games of the season heavily rotating so a 10th place finish doesn't really upset me if that's what it comes down to as well with the big news of course is that testimonial game I was just talking to Mrs Wearmouth about it does say it's at the King Power Stadium but confirmation that we do move back to the new home of football on the 1st of June so assuming that isn't delayed it will be the first game back at the newly expanded 20,000 capacity new home of football. And um, yeah, it's it's Sir Harrison Davis's testimonial match. We are going to be at home against Paris Saint-Germain. It's the most high profile game we could find to try and uh, to try and make him as much money as he possibly can. Like I say, fitting send off to what has been a fantastic home career. He's played one game, scored one goal for us this year in the Premier League. It says it all about that man. He is going to be playing today as well. Because it's Sir Harrison Davies and he deserves a proper goodbye. He's done, but we're going to say goodbye properly. And hopefully, similar to Slam Dunk, it won't be the end of him in the save once he does move on. So let's just... Oh, he's not going to play as a ball-playing defender. That is madness. But as you can see, we are we are as rotated as we can really be. Um, I guess there's an argument that Little could play. Although, to be fair, Little has played a few games in this, in this run. And he's started five league games for this season now. Only grabbing the one goal. Little still has plenty of time. Um, we've also got Chancel Bayer as well, who came through our youth system. He started a couple of games now, so it'd be good to see him weigh in with a goal. Nathan Curry back in the team with Sir Harrison Davies. Only seems right. Um, and Green, we might as well play Jack Green a few times because let's face it, uh, once Tristan McDonald is back in in the summer, there's a very good chance that we might be moving Jack Green on because Tristan McDonald at the moment... He's valued at ten and a half million, so that's far more money than Green ever was. Um, he's a two and a half star current ability, five star potential player, um, who's still not close to as good as Alex Williams. So he's not likely to be our starting keeper next year. Most likely scenario is we probably loan McDonald out again next year, and maybe even go with Dan Taylor as our backup. But if we get a decent option, because there's Dan Taylor. Two star current ability, two and a half star potential. He's never going to be good enough to play for us either, but he's certainly good enough to sit on the bench. Jack Green, if someone wants him, who wants him? West Ham. If West Ham want Jack Green, we've got a lot of goalkeepers. We could potentially let him go there. Um, or I'm still completely up for him being our backup goalkeeper forever, but he's going to play a couple of games for us today, along with some of the other um, old school players. And we're going to have a look at some of the youngsters as well, the likes of. Uh, Merrin returns to the bench. Caetano Hippolyte, um, who's a young right back, who's played a couple of games or one game for us. Now, I thought I'd used him more than that. Uh, but there's going to be there's going to be some faces that you've maybe not met before in today's episode as we finish the season off. So this team, why has Davies gone back to being a ball playing defender again? I feel like I keep changing him to be a, a central defender. I need to keep my eye on that when the game starts. Um, so it's green in goal, a back four of Abagai. Davies, Cardona and Gillespie, Anderson at the base of the midfield, Curry and Oliveira ahead of him, Richards and Sebastiao out wide with the youngster Bayer up front. Let's uh, let's submit this team. As you can see, huge changes. We're doing lots of rotation, giving everybody game time. 
pretty much everyone in the squad has started a Premier League game in the last five games. We have nothing to play for. And we don't, weirdly, we don't seem to be suffering results results wise massively from the huge rotation. So it's, I see that as a, a reassuring sign that we've got a lot of players in our squad who are all of roughly similar ability. And just some of them are getting a little bit more game time than others, which is awesome um, because it means we've got some players that we could maybe maybe throw a bit more weight behind next season and try and get into the team. Um, Davies chasing back and uh, he's never going to get there because he's Harrison Davies, but he, uh, he forces the save, forces Jack Green to make the save. Old oh, Davies looking to keep his goal per game ratio for the season going from the free kick is a good save from the Watford keeper. And now, of course, we're going to have another opportunity from the corner. It's old school. It's Nathan Curry with the slam dunk in swinger looking for Sir Harrison Davies. It definitely feels like an end of an era in this episode. Davies is going to be moving on. I will show you his testimonial in the transfer special. We'll watch that together because we'll hopefully get some of our former heroes return to the club as well. I'm not really sure who could come back, but you usually get a few former players turn up for testimonials. And there's a good chance Nathan Curry potentially, although he might not move on this summer, He's not really been part of the team this year. So Nathan Curry is probably coming to the end of his home career as well after an equally long spell. I, similar to Davies, I'd like to get him to the point where he can have a testimonial. I'm not sure if he'll qualify for one because so much of his home career was spent with us on loan. And I don't know how the game tracks that. But obviously he came through as a 16-year-old, broke into the team as a 17-year-old when Kieran Hodgkinson was sold. If you remember way back when, Nathan Curry was the original replacement for Kieran Hodgkinson when he originally moved on and was pretty much a regular starter for us ever since. He had that six-month spell where Brentford gave him a little bit of football in the championship and then came back on loan to us and was with us ever since. But I suspect that half season away at Brentford and then all the loans will be enough to mean that Nathan Curry, despite definitely deserving one, will never actually get a testimonial. But fingers crossed, football manager understands the reality of the situation a little better than that. And Davies has hit the post. Oh, I don't care the results in today's episode. All I want is Harrison Davies to finish the season as a goal as, as a goal a game player. We've spent three years in the Premier League now searching for a prolific striker. Imagine if that prolific striker all along was Harrison Davies. Curry with the free kick again, curling it in. Um, it falls to Sebastiao and Sebastiao's there with the equaliser. A first goal of the season for him shows quite a disappointing season. He was he got quite a lot of game time last year, has fallen down the pecking order a little bit this year with the emergence of Wally, um, probably more so than anybody. Maybe Lukinas as well has pushed him down the pecking order a little bit. But he was promising enough for us to throw the number nine shirt at him when he first arrived. And that's the thing with some of these players who, like uh, like Sebastiao, were regular starters a year and a half ago and have kind of fallen off. He's probably still a teenager. We'll check in on him in a second. But I, he's, at most, he's going to be 20 years old. So he's got plenty of time to force his way back into this team. And that's why rotating around as much as we are at this stage of the season is so important because it's giving players like him a chance to stake a claim for next year because we're probably not going to do as many transfers this summer as we have done in recent years. Quite apart from anything else, we've already spent most of our transfer budget. We signed that Belgian midfielder um, as well as the uh, as well as the Mexican striker. Um, so they're both going to be joining us in the summer and that's pretty much all of the budget gone unless Mrs. Wearmouth gives us some extra. And I think the two of them also max out our foreign player limit. So in order to bring in any more foreign players, we have to let go some of the ones that we've already got. And even then we can only bring in four because we'd have already brought in two of the six for this summer. So I just think there's a lot of stuff, a lot of outward pressure forcing us into not doing a lot of transfers this summer. Watch me go and spend 200 million and completely rebuild the squad this summer. After saying that, that's usually how this script goes. But it's a little bit harder to do in a homegrown save where I can't just get rid of five first-team players and replace them with five players who are first-team ready, unless we're suddenly getting a, the whole wonder kid market available to us and we can get these four-star current ability 18-year-olds that we've never been able to get before. And I acknowledge we've we've signed two of them now, so it might be that we're actually going to be able to upgrade significant parts of our squad if stuff like that keeps coming up. But what we've seen with the two we've already signed is they're very expensive. We've spent £70 million on two of them already, 
I don't, I don't know how many more of them we're going to be able to get our hands on. Right, we're going to make a few substitutions. Cardona's going to come off. Fazikas can come on for him. In fact, forget that. We're not going to bring Fazikas on. He's played a lot of football this year. We're going to bring Hippolyte on for Cardona. Gillespie can go into centre-back. And you get to have a look at the youngster Hippolyte coming on at right back. Equally, I want to have a look at Nigel Merrin. So he's going to come on for for um, Bayer up front. Although Little has... Pl I mean, I know you lot probably want to see Little, but Little's played quite a lot of football. And the other one I want to see is Caetano. So he's going to come on for Ola Richards. I think he's left-footed. He's either-footed and likes to be an inside forward on that side. So fair enough. You go be an inside forward. So I think this is Merrin's... First game actually playing up front. I know we've given him a few times off the bench. Last time I checked, Merrin was dubbed the next Michael Owen. He still could be the next Michael Owen. So we've got another good young striker there that we need to give a little bit of game time to at the end of this season. See if he's going to be any good or see if he needs to loan out next year. Um, there he is, number 38. Let's get the ball to him. Let's see if we can grab a goal. Abagai uh, playing left pack today, wins the ball back and it's Sebastian with the break. Merrin is ahead of him, um, and Caetano is going to be lurking on that left-hand side as well. Cross comes over. There's Oliveira bursting through from midfield. It's a first goal of the season for Oliveira. There's been calls all season long to play Oliveira as a striker or a shadow striker or in a more attacking role. He spent a lot of this season playing as our Mazala, so in an attacking position, and that's his first goal. So... That's why we're not pushing Oliveira further forward. He doesn't weigh in with enough goals. But he's grabbed one there, a potentially match-winning one, match -winning one. And now Curry to Davies. Oh, and Nigel Merrin has stolen that after Harrison Davies. And I don't think the big I don't think the big man begrudges the youngster grabbing his first goal for the club um, from a, from poaching off of Sir Harrison Davies. It potentially was going wide anyway. The corner comes in from Curry. Davies with the header. Merrin's there. And, I mean, that looked like the kind of finisher that we were looking for. What is his uh, finishing rating? Only an eight. See, you lot hate that kind of striker. Shows how irrelevant finishing can be sometimes. Uh, but as it stands, that actually puts us up to eighth place. Everton, I guess, are bottling something somewhere. So that is a big throw from Hippolyte. Have we got a long throw expert? Because that could be super handy. Sebastian's in again. I tell you what, these changes we've made on the 70-minute mark have turned this game on its head. These The three that have come on are looking a lot more lively than the ones that they replaced. Even Hippolyte down that right-hand side, having a natural sort of really attacking up and down right wing back. Hippolyte's got a future. Cross comes in from Curry again, but there's nobody under it this time. That's where we needed Harrison Davies lurking to grab what would be like his 85th goal for the club or something insane like that for a centre-back. What a career that man has had. Um, and there's Gillespie. I think this might be the first time we've played Gillespie at centre-back. Um, looks pretty comfortable there so far. It's not He's not exactly been under a lot of pressure, um, but hasn't looked like he's hating every minute of it, which is another positive. So many positives. I mean, yeah, Watford finished 20th. They've already been relegated. Okay, fair enough. But we still played quite well. Everton lost. We're up to eighth in the league. And now we just, I mean, depending on what Everton do, who are Everton playing in their game in hand? They're away against Birmingham. Once again, we need Slam Dunk to do us a solid. And if he does, we can secure our highest ever league finish with a victory over Newcastle on the last day. A couple more changes for what is almost certainly Sir Harrison Davies' final league appearance for the club. So we've had to get some of the other old boys in with him. Kieran Hodgkinson is going to partner Nathan Curry in midfield, possibly for the last ever time. And McCartan comes back in at left back. I mean, McCartan has played over 200 games for the club himself at this point. Actually, that's not true. 80 of them are out on loan. But still, he's been around a long time. That little partnership there, thing of beauty. Um, is there anyone else we should be bringing in? I don't think so. Um... There's no one else in particular who... I mean, Alex Williams would be the obvious one. We should probably get him on the bench for today, at the very least. Um, he's played many, many... In fact, you know what? Forget him being on the bench. Green can drop back down to the bench. Williams is going to be in behind Davies. Um, because I think he should be for today. Um, I don't know if he ever partnered Anderson. He probably must have done occasionally. Um, but we've made a couple of other changes too. Caetano coming in on the left. Um, Zapata... I, I mean, I'll level with you. I hit the the button to quick pick, add youth prospects, and then started making changes. So I can't even remember who we've, how we've changed from the last game. But there's the team. It's the final day of the season. Let's see if we can finish in eighth place, shall we? 
Um, I didn't actually look at how Everton got on midweek either, so it might be a much easier task than we initially anticipated, or it could be much harder. It's it's easier, and um, we just need to better Everton's score. Everton are away against Southampton. Southampton down in 13th place. We're away against Newcastle. We're down in 16th. So we just have to equal or better at whatever Everton do. So easy peasy. We're wearing the blue kit as well, which I have now finally received. I've received my blue home shirt. So if anyone like me was waiting for their blue one, because um, they got stuck, stuck at customs for ages, um, I received my blue one last weekend. So hopefully everyone who ordered a home shirt now has their home shirts. Um, born shirts are now on sale if you want if you missed out on a shirt um, I don't know What? let me know down in the comments is there interest in doing another run of home shirts before the end of the series now we're in the Premier League um, we're doing born ones this month but maybe July time the series is almost certainly still going to be going is there is there a market for doing another run of home shirts let me know down in the comments if you would still like to be able to order one and I'll see if I can convince Hope and Glory to let us do one more run on FM21. Curry with the in-swinger looking for Davies. All I want today is a Harrison Davies goal. That's that's all. I'm not asking for a lot. Just let Harrison Davies score in his final appearance for the club. His final time wearing that captain's arm, and it's not. He's playing Paris Saint-Germain unless he picks up an injury. He'll play his testimonial. He's even got a sad face on. We're all sad, Sir Harrison. I know you're only 30, and I'm putting you out to pasture, but... You know these young boys uh, are taking your spot. And he's come to me three times this season telling me he wants to play more games, telling me he's ready ready for a new challenge. I'm not choking up. I am I need a little sip of my drink. Got a little tickle in my throat. I promise there's no emotion in me. I'm an emotionless monster. Um, but Newcastle have actually taken the lead here, which is not ideal. But it, what might not matter... I was going to say if Everton are losing, they're not. Everton already winning 2-0. Um, in fact, Birmingham winning as well. Slam dunk, what are you doing to me? As it stands, we're in for a 10th place finish. We need to turn this ship around, boys and girls. We're going to encourage initially, but we're certainly going to go out there and demand more for this second half. To be fair, a 10th place finish with how much we've rotated at the end of this season isn't a disaster at all. I think the difference in prize money between 8th and 10th isn't enormous. But all the same, it would be nice to let Sir Harrison Davies go out with a win. Perhaps he's destined to grab the goal. McCartan with the throw. It ends up back with McCartan on this left-hand side. Zapatar now. Loads of space to pick a ball. Plays it back to Sir Harrison Davies. Always the right move. Sebastiao now on the right. He's got a big, big overlap from Gillespie. Eventually finds him and they're just knocking the ball back and forth between them at the moment. And it goes back to Zapatar and all the way back to Anderson. Anderson finds Curry, who's a little bit more positive, turns, finds Bayer, who plays it out to McCartan. Caetano now cutting into the area. There's players queuing up in the middle. That was beautiful from Caetano. Went past his defender as if he wasn't there, but then rather than squaring it for a lurking Kieran Hodgkinson, he decided to win the corner to set one up for Harrison Davies. Um, I don't think that was him getting on the end of it. Number 20, who's that? Who is our number 20? Zapatar. I think is the one who ended up on the end of that, which is weird because I don't even think he's supposed to be in the penalty area for corners. I think our corner instruction maybe needs a little bit of a tweak. Right, Caetano has taken a knock and needs to come off the game. Is suggesting bringing on Cardona for him, which makes all the sense in the world. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to bring on we're going to bring on Little, who you didn't get to see in the last game, um, and we're going to swap that front three around to that, and then we're probably still going to take off. Bayer and bring on Merrin, who can come on and play on that side. And then we're going to bring on Hippolyte again because I like Hippolyte and I want to see him mixing things up again down that right hand side. The fact that I'm not turning to Costa Bile, even in this situation, I think should probably indicate that I am just about done with Costa Bile now. We've got our new guy coming in in the summer and we've got these young strikers starting to emerge as well. Sebastiao, with his second game of the episode, um, we've got Little, we've got Merrin, we've got Bayer. Um, I think Costa Bile is done and will be someone we look to move on this year. Um, I think that's probably going to be one of the themes of the transfer special we do tomorrow. Less about who we bring in and more about moving quite a lot of the fringe players on, seeing how much money we can generate, and then seeing about reinvesting it back into some more wonder kids. We want... I want a wonder kid only policy this summer. We've got a big squad full of lots of talented youngsters. We don't need to bring in more talented youngsters. We want to bring in the most talented youngsters at this point. Um, Hippolyte with the clearance and made Alex Williams look a bit silly because he'd already started diving for it. 
Right, Anderson, this is all set up beautifully for a Harrison Davies winner in his final league game for the club. Uh, Merrin plays it to Nathan Curry. That, what, after all this, watch Davies not leave. Because <laughs> I can't sell him in the early part of the summer because he's got to still be here on the 9th of July to play in his testimonial. Uh, right, it is Newcastle coming down this left-hand side again and they have scored. Surely that's offside. He looked a mile offside. The ref's having a look at it. I think we might just be getting away with this one and then we're going to demand more and set... Th we want a corner. Set things up. Stick a corner onto the head of Sir Harrison Davies and watch us all cry like little girls. Um, or little boys. I mean, I cried when I was a little boy. I don't know why. I don't know why we always default to girl. Little boys cry just as much. They're little. Here it is. Here's the corner. McCartan. Um, it was actually Anderson that he's aimed for there. He obviously hasn't read the script. McCartan again playing into the area, looking for little. And it's with Anderson again and Curry. Curry playing it forward. Hodgkinson is in here, but just doesn't have the pace to to chase it down and square it for. I think that's little lurking in the middle. It is little. Um, and now Anderson heading forward to Sebastian. And it's Kieran Hodgkinson who's in here. And Hodgkinson knows to just shoot and force the corner. He could have gone for goal there. He's not going to. He's setting things up for Sir Harrison Davies. It's Curry with the in-swinger. Davies is lurking. There he is. Number four, Harrison Davies. It misses him. It goes to Anderson again. What are we up to here? Merrin now. 88 minutes on the clock. And we all want Harrison Davies to score. I hope he stayed forward. Cross comes in. Sebastian sliding in. Trying. He, is, he looks like a new man in these last couple of games. Um, but I don't think we're going to get the Harrison Davies goal that we all crave unless it really is coming with a last kick. It's not. I think we've missed out on that eighth place finish as well uh, because we've only managed to pick up a draw. Unless there's been a turnaround in the Everton game. It is a ninth place finish. I am still just better than slam dunk. And that is, the, that's what it's all about, really. Making sure I'm better than a guy whose managerial career started years after mine and used to play for me. Um, but there's our confirmation, a second successive ninth place finish, um, which earns us £26 million. That goes down really quite nicely. And anything else significant on there? No, nothing immediately emerging. So I think we can now safely just wait for tomorrow's transfer special, the arrival of these two boys. And then we'll see what other shenanigans we get up to, including the testimonial of Sir Harrison Davies. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.